A metric ton of ore yields only about 6.5 grams of gold. So, Aaron Dover says these so-called gold mines are fishy. As the documentary stated, it takes one metric ton of ore to produce about 6 grams of pure gold, like all metals. The secret to gold is more about how it's made rather than where it is found. Some are even claiming to extract gold from a typical bag of sand that one may purchase from a hardware store. I don't know if you can see it, there's a nice flake right there. Yeah, that ain't half bad. There's another little piece right there. I don't know if you can see it on the camera. Right there. And all those finds right up there in the I'll corner. Woo. Woo -wee. Well, there you have it. There's not a lot of gold in there, but there is some. Not worth the effort, though. So the gold is going to settle where this pan is tapping, just like a shaker table. And you can see that gold walking up right in here. So really what we're doing is, this gold in here, maybe I ran 2,000 pounds of dirt through our monster hog. And we catch a ton of fine gold in that thing. It looks like dirt, but muck is actually gold ore. Maybe this dirt that gold can be extracted from is nothing special. And I know that that's iron. Hear that? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take another sample. But what I'm going to do is what's called a soil sample. Is I'm going to take areas where heavy iron concentrations are uh, sitting on top of this bedrock right here. And then I'm going to put in the bags and number them like I showed you. And then I'll go back and then I'll hand pan them and see if I got any gold, some fine gold from it that's coming off that load. There's that black sand, let me see. There we go. There we go. Oh, I see something floating on, see what I mean? Gold flo Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. Look at that. It's ironic, but gold is around us everywhere. It's in the soil in our backyards. It's in these rocks here in the riverbeds. But the problem is, it's in very small amounts. In these rocks, the gold may be at one part per billion. Modern scientists suggest gold has extraterrestrial origins older than the Earth itself, but I'm not so sure. Physicists discovered that this ultimate metal was created in outer space, long before planet Earth existed. Cool story, bro, but we all know outer space is likely to be some major bullshit. Knowing that volcanic activity is also a hoax, the only plausible theory for naturally occurring higher concentrations of gold is due to water erosion and the collection of sediments in either underground deposits along with other materials such as quartz ore, where it has washed away from the black sand it is associated with in or near rivers. While ore material may look similar, the concentrations or grade of ore within the material are different. Ores can also vary in chemical makeup. These factors also play a big part in determining how the ore is processed. Around the 15th century, European monarchs and the Roman Catholic Church sought to expand their empire into the Americas. Although legend says they were searching for gold, it is more likely they took control of indigenous lands and populations to produce gold. Regardless of source material quality, getting the gold out is lots of work. Before modern machinery, it was imperative for those who wanted to produce gold to find the best sources of raw material. Even when resorting to slave labor and animal cruelty, the process would have been very slow and costly compared to today's methods, if the indigenous societies of the Americas were actually crafting with gold prior to the European invasions, it would have been low quality. As we can see in the documentary, modern high temperature smelting and removal of slag only renders 85% pure gold. These bars, called Doré bars, are a mixture of about 85% gold and 15% silver. Gold mining has changed dramatically in the last 150 years. Yeah, but the assholes that run the world's organized religions haven't, in fact, they appear to be running the same old bullshit tricks they've been playing since about 6000 BC.
they are sent to a European refinery to be refined into pure gold bullion. European refinery? I wonder why the gold has to be taken so far away to be refined. In Europe, to this day, there are lodges that have alchemy labs in them. And the interest in alchemy has started to increase substantially amongst lodges in the United States, particularly of the traditional observance variety. We find alchemy being mentioned in the earliest texts of human civilization. We find alchemy incorporated later on into the Gothic cathedrals of Europe. Some people have speculated that the Knights Templar themselves were students in studying alchemy and inherited these texts from the Muslims of the Holy Land during the Crusades, and people like the Druze and the Sufis and the Sabians. But alchemy is certainly no joke. The alchemists kept some interesting secrets. One of those secrets was harnessing electricity from the air with the use of tall spire sand plated domes. In my previous videos I've showed that um, loads of tall structures are actually atmospheric electrical masts. Um, but that includes a lot of the structures that you think are old historical relics like, you know, very, very tall cathedral spires. Unfortunately, it seems the old alchemists could not think of much use for electricity other than electrolysis of precious metals. Basically, the monarchs and religious leaders held a monopoly on this technique and certainly have the gold to show for it. The Feynman lectures on atmospheric electricity demonstrate an electrical pressure differential that increases the higher one goes in the atmosphere. By raising a tall spire or a conductive dome into the air while making sure it remains insulated from the ground, a serious differential can occur when linked to batteries, capacitors, or a grounded conductor, therefore providing usable electrical current. It seems to be no wonder that metals such as gold and silver were held to have spiritual-like qualities. It took a mysterious power harnessed from the sky to effectively separate them from the alloy known as electrum. Other methods like salt cementation are not very effective, and although history suggests that the process of electrolysis was not understood until the 18th century, that is likely a lie, and a privileged few kept this secret technology for thousands of years. Long lost legends tell us women were made to cover their hair inside places of worship because the electrical charge certain domes or spires created would cause long hair to be raised into the air. Although it may seem strange churches doubled as scientific laboratories, even to this day major religious organizations like the Catholic Church even maintain state-of-the-art facilities. For the longest time, European universities also remained in the hands of the clergy. Perhaps this occult knowledge goes back to a common source from the ancient Hindu religion. The Indian concept of Diyaspita is not unlike other theological conceptions of a chief sky god featured in Judaism, Gnosticism, Greco-Roman, and even Norse mythology. Sanskrit is thought to be the origin of so-called Indo-European language, and likely religion and technology followed the language into the Middle East and Europe, so basically, whether it's Judaism, Catholicism, Greek Orthodoxy, Islam, Hinduism, Freemasonry, or even Buddhism, it seems to share common origins from the Indian subcontinent, and remains to this day, run by an elite inner circle that doesn't really share real information with the sheep-like herds of worshippers they control. When clergy are worth millions of dollars, you must ask yourself how the fuck does one get rich being a priest, and with all the poor and suffering people. Do they really even believe in their own teachings? They do love to flaunt their gold though. Hey!